Good afternoon. Today I'm here to announce that Alberta is ready to safely and cautiously enter step two of our path forward. I want to thank every Albertan who has responsibly observed public health measures through step one over the past several weeks to protect lives and our healthcare system in the process. I know this has not been easy, especially with cold weather in February limiting our ability to gather outdoors. But the sacrifices that Albertans have made are the reason that we're able to take another step forward today. COVID-19 is still here and it is still very much a threat to our health and our, our healthcare system. Still, over the past few months, Alberta has made tremendous progress. Let me highlight just a few examples of how far we've come. Our healthcare system, which we all rely on, continues to see a sharp decline in people admitted to hospital and uh, in intensive care due to the novel coronavirus. From a peak of about 950 patients in hospital, we are down to 257 today with COVID-19, about 200 patients below our threshold that we set for entering this phase two in Alberta's path forward. Our long-term care and designated supported living facilities, typically called nursing homes, have seen cases plummet. Thankfully, Active cases in our long-term care facilities have now declined by more than 95% from December's peak. And the active cases in designated supported living facilities for seniors have dropped by over 92%. So this is encouraging data. And this data speaks to both the sacrifices that millions of Albertans have made, as well as the huge impact of COVID-19 vaccinations since we've uh, delivered the second dose to all the residents of those facilities. When we started step one of the path forward on the 8th of February, there were 432 COVID patients in hospital and 76 in, in intensive care. Today, we have 257 people in hospital, as I mentioned, 48 of whom are in intensive care units. All of which means that we're not out of the woods, but we can continue taking small steps forward as we go into step two. Effective today, targeted health measures will be eased for indoor fitness activities and for libraries. As a cautionary measure, possible changes to current restrictions for retail, hotels, banquets, community halls and conference centres have been delayed uh, given that we have seen a small recent increase in the testing positivity rate and the number of active cases. Minister Shandro will provide more details on what specifically will, uh, we will ease uh, for these sectors in a couple of minutes. Alberta is taking a careful approach as we said that we would when announcing the path forward back in January. While our hospitalizations are dropping, we have uh, seen cases at the same time level off. So the number of active cases has leveled off recently and the uh, testing positivity rate has risen a bit. We also have observed a small increase in the daily number of new uh, variant cases and that is worrisome too. That's why we have to proceed cautiously while still moving forward. I know that many Albertans want us to relax many more health measures today, but we cannot and we must not allow exponential growth to start to take hold, driven by these new more contagious variants as we've seen in many countries around the world, because to do so would end up uh, in weeks jeopardizing our healthcare system. So we must take a balanced approach and move carefully and safely focused on the data and with the expert advice that we receive from the Chief Medical Officer and the Public Health Team. To every Albertan that is worried that we're moving too slowly and who longs for life to get back to the way things used to be, I hear your concerns, I share them. We all want to get back to that place as soon as possible. Uh, but for that to happen, the game changer is the vaccine. It is incredibly frustrating and totally unacceptable that Canada is ranked 40th in the world for per capita inoculation against this virus. Widespread use of the vaccine will mean freedom, which is why we renew our urgent call on the federal government 
to catch up with the rest of the world in vaccine procurement. It's also why we need to be careful now, keeping the virus at bay while we vaccinate hundreds of thousands of seniors across the province. On this, I have to stress the huge importance of uh, avoiding uh, indoor social gatherings. In our Now that our contact tracing system is on top of new cases uh, with very strong investigations, especially re related to the uh, variant cases, um, we can see good data. With about a third of the cases, we don't know their uh, source of transmission, but for over 30%, we know that they're happening at home, just like in the fall. And so we need to be very careful about at-home transmission. I want to remind Albertans that if you need to self-isolate, if you've got a symptom, if you're feeling sick, you've tested positive, uh, and you can't do it safely at home, we are offering free, voluntary uh, hotel stays with uh, isolation payments to support your finances. To every Albertan that is worried that we're moving too fast, I hear you as well. Please know that we're watching the spread of this virus very closely. By moving to step two, we are protecting both lives and livelihoods and taking a safe step forward for Alberta. I believe in our province and I trust that Albertans will continue to do the right thing. Thank you and now I'll ask Minister Shandro to provide more details about these steps. Thanks Premier and good afternoon everyone. Today's announcement that we're moving into step two is another safe, uh, another smart step forward for our province. Now it was a little over a month ago that we announced our path forward and we laid out a clear plan with a clear threshold for each step forward. And now the time to move to step two is here. But as Premier said, we're going ahead cautiously, well aware that the pandemic is not yet over. We're confident that these small changes first make sense, but also that they are safe. We're allowing room for folks to do more things that are important to them while keeping strong measures in place to stop the spread of COVID in our communities. And we're making two changes. First, we're allowing libraries to open subject to a limit of 15% of fire code capacity, not including staff. And this considers the concerns that we've heard related to the important role that libraries play, in particular in some rural communities where they have limited access to high-speed internet. And the second, adults will be allowed to restart their fitness routines. Low-intensity individual and group fitness activities will now be allowed indoors, like Pilates, Tai Chi, and indoor climbing. And I know that many Albertans are eager to get back to other activities like running on the treadmill. High intensity activities like that are still only allowed on a one on one basis with a trainer or for a household and uh, one trainer. Wearing masks will still be mandatory during low intensity fitness activity and for coaches or trainers during high intensity activity and all participants will need to stay three meters apart. Drop in fitness remains not allowed. We relied on recommendations from the fitness sector in making these decisions. And that includes how we define uh, low intensity. We also uh, wanted to offer more flexibility while keeping safety. And as Premier noted, changes to current measures for retail, children's sports, hotels, banquets, community halls, and conference centers have been delayed. We're being cautious while still moving ahead. While these changes are positive, we can't lose sight of the fact that further easing of measures opens up the chance of spreading COVID. And for that reason, we've chosen to hold off on easing restrictions on retail businesses for now. While we're all excited at the idea of participating in more activities, please continue to remember that the, the risks uh, are still out there and please remember to keep each other safe. The variants of concern are, as you know, we've spoken about this before, estimated to be 30 to 50% more infectious than the current strain. And now that the variants are in Alberta, we have to be even more vigilant, even as we ease measures. We're watching the leading indicators very carefully, and we're fully prepared to reinstate measures as needed if trends in daily cases shift. We'll wait at least three weeks before we make a decision regarding moving forward with step three, in the meantime, we'll continue to roll out the vaccination plan 
administering doses as soon as we get them from the federal government. But we need time to vaccinate those at the highest risk to reduce deaths, to reduce the burden on our hospitals. So please stay the course and abide by the public health measures. And remember to, to, low, uh, to lower, uh, the lower that we bend the curve, the more that we can safely open up in the weeks ahead. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll invite Dr. Hinshaw to provide today's COVID update. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, and good afternoon, everyone. Over the last 24 hours, we have identified 291 new cases of COVID-19. We completed about 5,900 tests, and our positivity rate is about 4.9%. Looking to schools, there are currently active alerts or outbreaks in 236 schools or about 10% of schools in the province. These schools have a combined total of 890 cases since January 11th. We have identified 35 additional cases of the variant since yesterday, bringing our total to 457. For the past week, the RT value for the province was 1.01. .01. This includes 1.16 for Edmonton, 1.01 for Calgary, and 0.94 for the rest of the province combined. As the Premier noted, currently there are 257 people in hospital, including 48 admitted to the ICU. Sadly, I must announce that two new deaths were reported to Alberta Health in the last 24 hours. While it is encouraging to see the rate of COVID-19 fatalities declining, this does not lessen the loss that many Albertans continue to feel from losing a loved one. My condolences go to anyone mourning the loss of someone they cared about. A vaccine is our best path to preventing these severe outcomes, and I am happy to say we have administered more than 235,000 doses of vaccine in our province, with more than 88,000 Albertans fully immunized. Since the rollout of the vaccine to Alberta seniors age 75 and over, February 24th, more than 123,000 eligible Albertans have been booked to get the COVID-19 vaccine. In just over five days, Alberta has provided a first dose to upwards of 31,000 eligible individuals in that age group. We anticipate that another 8,000 were given today. We thank Alberta seniors for their patience as we work through some challenges during the first few days of clinics. I also want to thank the family and friends who helped navigate the online booking system and safely transported their loved ones to appointments. It's wonderful to see so many people coming together to help protect our seniors. I'm pleased to report that the long lines at some clinics have been minimized by new processes that have been put in place by Alberta Health Services. We appreciate people arriving only five minutes before their appointment and waiting in their cars until just before their appointment time. I understand everyone's desire to be on time. For many people, getting their first dose is an exciting day, but this is why we have an appointment system. Please know that if you have an appointment, vaccine is reserved for you and you will get your immunization. While we roll out the vaccine, we need to continue to ensure the health and well-being of one another. I ask all of you who have immunization appointments in the coming days to continue to follow physical distancing guidelines. Also, if you are comfortable going into your appointment alone, please do not bring a support person or family member with you as there are staff who can help assist you and this can prevent overcrowding. We also encourage everyone to wear clothing that will easily allow access to your upper arm for receiving the immunization, like a short sleeve shirt. For those who are eligible for the vaccine, but haven't yet booked, appointments are still available throughout the province. There are three options to book your appointment for receiving the vaccine. These are using the AHS online booking tool, calling HealthLink at 811, or contacting currently participating pharmacies in Edmonton Calgary or Red Deer. A list of participating pharmacies is available through the Blue Cross website at ab.bluecross.ca. I also want to thank every Albertan who continues to make sacrifices and work to limit the spread of the virus in our province. By making choices to reduce in-person in -person interactions, you continue to make a world of difference. You are helping limit the spread of COVID-19 
limit pressure on our healthcare system, and ultimately these choices have put us in the position we are in today. We have climbed down from the peak in December thanks to the ongoing hard work, vigilance and sacrifice of many. I know the prospect of slightly fewer restrictions may signal to some that we've turned a corner and can now let our guard down in other areas as well, but this could not be further from the truth. We need to be more careful than ever to not create opportunities for the virus and its variants to spread. The progress that we have made is not guaranteed to last. It is up to all of us to continue lowering cases. COVID-19 still poses a threat to our province and the choices we make every day still deeply matter. As with the previous step, we will continue to monitor hospitalizations to ensure they're continuing to trend downward. And we'll also keep a close eye on our leading indicators of growth rate, new case numbers, and positivity rate to watch for any concerning shifts that may require us to pause or reverse our current approach. We are being both responsive and cautious, and we will continue to keep you updated in the days ahead. Thank you, and we'll be happy to take questions. Okay, we'll be going to the phones for questions now. In order to get to as many as possible, we just ask that you limit yourself to one question. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? Thank you. The first question is from Carlisle Fizet, CTB. Hi, uh, this is a question for the Health Minister. A clarification question when it comes to the measures that have been delayed from uh, initially Phase 2. Are they now part of Phase 3? Could they come back sooner? Um, how are you approaching that? That decision hasn't been made, and so it, it's not that they've been delayed till, till Step 3. Um, it's, uh, it's still going to be up to the Cabinet COVID Committee, and so it could come before Step 3. Those will be decisions that we make as we continue to evaluate uh, the evidence with, um, with Dr. Hinshaw in her office. I would just add to that that if the numbers start going uh, clearly back in the right direction with diminishing new cases, um, and if we can clearly establish that the, uh, the variants of concern are under control, uh, that the uh, inferred rate of transmission and those, those other key metrics, if they start going down in the right direction, uh, I think we can absolutely look forward to uh, taking additional steps uh, within uh, the, the phase two. Uh, but uh, given the recent uh, plateauing of total active cases, the recent slight increase in the testing positivity rate, the RT rate, um, we uh, pr thought it was uh, best to proceed at this point with caution. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? James Keller, Globe and Mail. Hi, this is a message or a question for uh, the Premier and Dr. Hinshaw. What is happening in the Northern Health region? I mean, cases, new cases have almost doubled in the past three weeks. Um, are, what are, are the theory as to what's going on? How concerned are you? And are there any, is there any talk of, you know, restrictions for that particular area that would try to bring infections under control? Very good question, James. Actually, we spent a fair bit of time discussing exactly that uh, at our COVID Cabinet Committee meeting uh, today. Um, we see some parts of the province, uh, the uh, uh, eastern side of rural Alberta from Lloydminster down to the U.S. border doing very well. Uh, for example, at, uh, at fewer than 50 cases per 100,000, but in the northeast quadrant of the uh, province, which is one half of the North Health Zone, uh, we certainly see uh, very significant increases. Uh, one local geographic area with 1,600 cases per 100,000. Um, I think of our top 12 local geographic areas for active cases, if I'm not mistaken, nine or 10 of those are in the northwest uh, quadrant of the province. So I have asked for more information about what might be causing that. But one, one thing we do know is that, unfortunately, uh, there have been an, a number of outbreaks on some First Nation reserves uh, in that area. Uh, let me say we commend our First Nations communities and leadership for having been so careful about COVID from the beginning. Um, uh, we have heard some reports of uh, socializing, social activity that may have caused a, a transmission. So we are renewing our call to um, First Nations leadership and communities to work with our public health authorities uh, to make sure that uh, people are doing everything they can uh, to comply with the measures. Uh, we also saw some, uh, some outbreaks uh, in uh, care homes in the Grand Prairie area. I believe one was um, 
a uh, community care home for people with intellectual disabilities. And uh, Tyler, I think you might have, or Dr. Hinshaw may have the details on the other two there. So there have been a number of outbreaks. Um, and, and finally, um, you know, one thing that we, we can't, uh, what matters here is not simply the, the stringency of public health measures, but also the willingness of people to comply with them. And uh, we would just encourage people in every part of the province to take uh, these measures seriously. And with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Dr. Hinshaw. Unless Tyler, you want to jump in as well. No, all of that was correct, um, it, but they were both congregate living that, that weren't included in the, the phase one uh, vaccine rollout. That's correct. Thanks, and I would just add that um, the virus, of course, can spread from one person to many when given the opportunity, uh, and that is essentially what we've seen is that in some of those environments and some of the communities in that north west corner of the province, as well as, quite frankly, in, in other communities across the province, where we let our guard down, where there is uh, an opportunity for the virus to spread from one to many, it does so very quickly. And so this is, again, a reminder that even in those places where currently there's very low rates, uh, it doesn't take long for the virus to spread quickly if we give it the chance. And we need to keep vigilant so that we do not uh, provide that opportunity for that rapid spread. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? David Staples, Edmonton Journal. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, my question is for the Premier and for Dr. Hinshaw. I, uh, many people, most people now in long-term care and in DSL-4 have had two vaccinations, most of them for at least a month now. My question is, um, why are they still kept in the strictest kind of quarantine where they're not uh, allowed out of their facility to see loved ones? They've been in lockdown since mid-November. Um, they can't get out. Um, Many of them are suffering from consi confinement syndrome, which is affecting their physical and mental health. So we know from the CDC that both transmission uh, and them catching the disease now that they've been vaccinated is very unlikely. So under what public health measure are they still under such strict lockdown? We know that it takes uh, about three weeks for seniors after the first dose to see the full impact of that dose and about a week after the second dose for them to see the full impact of that second dose. So it's important to not just look at the dates when the vaccines have been delivered, but also giving that extra time. We are looking at the evidence when it comes to transmission, when it comes to protection from severe infection. It's important to note uh, that we're, we're still watching very closely, um, but we, we don't necessarily at this point have all the evidence that we'd like to with respect to the impact of the vaccines on ability to transmit to others. That is a critical piece that we're watching closely. We are looking at our policies around long-term care and, and supportive living facilities. It's important to note that we have made clear that every resident in every supportive living facility, long-term care uh, should be able to have their designated support people, so two people per resident, visit them uh, at all times, including in outbreak situations, so that they would have the ability to have that support of loved ones, um, even in outbreak situations, unless there's a specific and unusual circumstance. And we are, as I said, looking at how we may be able to update our visitor guidance, but at this particular moment in time, um, we just are wanting to get that additional evidence about the impact of the vaccine on the ability for transmission to happen before we make any final changes. And I'll uh, pass it over to see, do you have anything? Yeah. I, I, if I could add to, uh, to that before Premier, um, David, just to re reiterate uh, what Dr. Hinshaw said, that a lot of us want to think of vaccines as protected or unprotected before we've had it or after we've had it. And it's really important to think of judging vaccines in three ways. It can protect somebody from um, a severe outcome like death or hospitalization. It can uh, prevent uh, infection and it could protect somebody from uh, transmitting the, uh, the virus. And so three different ways for us to be judging, and we, we do have uh, evidence on, on the first one on severe outcomes, but uh, for that last piece, that third one, just to reiterate what Dr. Hinshaw said, that's gonna be an important one for us to be looking at as we think about um, pulling back some of the measures in particular for those who are most vulnerable in long-term care. Uh, Premier? 
Thanks. I don't have much uh, to add to it, but thank you very much, David, for the very important question. And we, we know and we have to be constantly mindful that the only health risk here is not COVID-19. The, uh, the mental uh, health impacts, particularly for isolated seniors, uh, the deterioration in their physical condition that's often attached to that, um, limited compassionate visits. Uh, we know that uh, not only is that inflicting real pain and sacrifice on their loved ones, but most especially on uh, seniors in those kinds of uh, congregate living facilities. So uh, I do uh, hope that I'm looking forward to further advice from uh, Dr. Hinshaw and her team on when it would be uh, deemed safe to move forward with relaxing some of those measures. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Julia Wong, Global News. Hi, this question is for Dr. Hinshaw and the Premier. So, Dr. Hinshaw, you said on January 20th that sector-specific transmission data would be released in the coming weeks. Um, the Premier mentioned a percentage of transmission happening in households. What does the data show about where other transmission has been taking place? And I also have to ask, the National Advisory Committee of Immunization is recommending that the AstraZeneca vaccine not be given to those 65 and older. Will Alberta be following this recommendation, and will rollout priorities change to accommodate the AstraZeneca vaccine? Um, it, it perhaps, uh, well, okay, I'll defer the question on sector-specific data to Dr. Hinshaw, uh, but, but I think Tyler might be in, in a good position to answer the AstraZeneca question. Oh, please do, Premier. So right now, uh, we, we have uh, made the decision for, for AstraZeneca to, to not, not be provided uh, as it's recommended by, as well, our own uh, vaccine advisory committee that we have here in Alberta and the physicians we have, Dr. Hinshaw and her recommendations, uh, to, to not be providing it to folks who are over 65. Now, how that's going to change the uh, the administration of those who are in phase two is still to be determined. We will be make, making those uh, decisions and announcing them uh, fairly soon. Uh, but you're, you're right that uh, the, it has been recommended for the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, to not be provided for those who are 65 and older. With respect to the uh, sector specific data, we have been watching closely since we've been able to do more investigations uh, since our numbers have been increasing. What we see is that about 40% uh, of our active cases acquired the disease in household. Uh, we know that that in household transmission is the highest risk. And so again, want to reiterate the importance of making sure that when anyone in a household uh, starts to feel any symptoms or if someone in a household is identified as a close contact of someone with COVID, it's really critical within that household to separate people out and if that can't be done to take advantage of the isolation and quarantine hotel offer that is available because that will significantly reduce that uh, proportion of cases where transmission is happening at home. We're seeing about 30% of our cases where we're not able to determine the source of transmission, and that's due to several factors. It could be due to the fact that an individual may have had multiple activities in the 14 days before testing positive or before their symptoms started. So it's not possible to determine which of those activities was the source. Uh, and it's really important to remember that in that 30%, there are a lot of activities that are currently open. We know that about 1% of our current cases uh, have been attributed to retail or restaurants, uh, all of those in kind of one category. Uh, but again, it's that 30% that's concerning. And I want to reiterate what I've asked before, that if Albertans are identified as a COVID case, it is critical to be forthcoming with the contact tracers to provide all the accurate information about what activities took place so that we can prevent further spread and have a better picture of exactly what's happened in those 14 days before so that we're better able to pinpoint what activities are risky. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Lauren Boothby, Edmonton Journal. Hello, I had a similar question um, to Julia Wong. You sort of answered it, but um, I was wondering if you uh, could give some more information about why um, you think that uh, these other activities that are being delayed today, why you're not reopening them, reopening them based on uh, the science of what you have about how COVID is transmitted? And um, will you also release uh, sector-specific data about how COVID is transmitted from what you do know from uh, this past year and from last year? Well, maybe Dr. Inshaw first before um, you answer the more specific questions, but just to reiterate that we have spoken before 
Um, even going back to when we first announced the, the path forward plan is that the stepping back of measures, or stepping down of measures, I should say, was going to be um, focused on the, uh, the, the lagging indicators, in particular our hospitalizations, but uh, that we also had to be looking at leading indicators and, and increases in our, our case counts um, increases as well as Premier pointed out in positivity rate and the R value in the province. So looking at that uh, data at that as well at this time that it was necessary for us to to be able to make sure that we are continuing with step two. We're continuing with um, a clear and safe uh, path forward for Albertans in stepping down our measures but doing it in a safe way that is responsible looking at the, uh, the leading indicators. And uh, Dr. Hinshaw uh, for the rest of the question. Sure. So uh, what I would say specifically about the uh, release of information on sector specific transmission, we have been working with our analytics team on putting that together. Uh, it, it, it sounds straightforward, but unfortunately, when we dig down into that category of the specific types of activities, it does become quite complex. And so we continue to work on that to be able to provide that overall summary. Uh, and it, it just hasn't been completed at this point in time. Okay, we have time for two more callers. Operator, can you put through our next caller? Rick Bell, Calgary Sun. Uh, good afternoon, uh, and a uh, question for the Premier. Um, a while back, you told Albertans to really focus on hospitalizations, and you know, it went from 600, and then the next step would be 450, and then 300, and then 150. So, how do you explain to people? who will no doubt ask after reading the stories that will appear in the hours and uh, days ahead, how we are now almost 200 under step two, and if the numbers stayed this way on hospitalizations, I believe we'd be in step three, and yet in reality we are at best at step one and a half. So how would you explain, and, and they're going to hear all about our values and this and that and the next thing, but you told them to be very focused on hospitalizations. This was the measure. So as that measure goes down, how do you explain to people that we have 257 people in the hospital and we're at step one and a half? Good question, Rick. So on January 27th, when we announced this path forward, uh, we said that uh, very, we would gradually move to relax public health restrictions based mainly on reduction in uh, who was in, how many patients were in hospital, but that if we saw cases start to tick back up uh, and uh, if we saw uh, in, in the leading indicators like new cases uh, starting to tick up that we might have to go a little bit slower. We were very clear about that from the get-go. Um, at the end of the day, this is uh, a, all about taking a, a, a careful, balanced approach, uh, relaxing restrictions wherever we can safely do so. Uh, we do have capacity in the healthcare system now, but recognizing that that can turn around in the wrong dire direction uh, very quickly, as we saw in the fall. Let's not forget our fall experience where we went from uh, 100 people in hospital to 950 in just five weeks. Uh, we, we can't let something like that happen again because um, of the, the ob for obvi so many obvious reasons. So it's a, we were very clear this was a, a going to be a, a careful, gradual, uh, a step approach. Uh, yes, a key indicator is the number of people in hospital, but as we always have pointed out, it is a, quotes, lagging indicator, which means um, it, it, uh, the number of folks in hospital with COVID is sort of three to four weeks after the number of infections that, that, that you get. And um, it typically it takes about three weeks for after somebody's been infected to, if they get really sick, to present at the hospital. And then often they're in the hospital for a week or longer. So it is, it is a lagging indicator. It's an important one. It's a key metric, but it's not the only metric. We would be, frankly, stupid if we were to close our eyes to uh, uh, increases in overall cases. Right now, we have seen a slight increase in the number of da uh, average daily cases, the number of active cases, the rate of transmission, and most worrisome um, in the uh, variants. Now, here's, you know, uh, I, 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 here's the good news on the variants. Um, we've had variants circulating in Alberta since the beginning of January, brought in by travel. 
And I know there were some folks out there who were uh, pre predicting on Twitter that we were going to, by now, by, by the end of February, uh, two-thirds of our cases would be variant cases and we'd be uh, in a straight climb up in terms of cases. Uh, that, that, thankfully, they were wrong. Thankfully, we through I think in part through super aggressive uh, contact tracing, we've been able to uh, pretty successfully contain those more contagious variants. Uh, but we've gone from an average of about 12 a day to about 24 a day, and and that is that if, if those variants take off, they can just take off uh, in a straight line up. So we've got to watch that very carefully. That's what we're doing. Um, and I, Rick, I would also put this in perspective, that, that by and large, our restrictions now are about where British Columbia is. Uh, so we are the, the two least restricted provinces in the country. I know that's no uh, consolation if you own a movie theater or a conference center, um, but uh, over 99% of Alberta businesses are able to operate now within public health guidelines and today a very important uh, lifeline for the owners of, of fitness uh, businesses, including gyms in that respect. If I could as well before the next question. Uh, Rick, just because this is something you, you and I talked about before a few weeks ago, um, but just a, a reminder that our leading indicators um, wouldn't be increasing if we received in February the same number of vaccines that European countries got. Yeah. Uh, and just to, to remind people that, that uh, you know, Rick, vaccines equal freedom. And uh, the fact that we were not given in February the same number of vaccines that we were originally told we were, should be expecting is, is a bit of the problem as well. Operator, can you please put through our last caller? Stephanie Rousseau, Radio Canada. Bonjour, ma question est pour le Premier ministre. Euh, je voudrais savoir, M. Kenny, pourquoi est-ce que vous allez de l'avant avec la phase 2 alors que le taux de reproduction, le taux de positivité aussi ont augmenté là, au cours des derniers jours? Et aussi, pourquoi vous ouvrez, mais vous ouvrez pas complètement, par exemple pour les sports de haute intensité ou pour les salles de banquet? Pourquoi avoir fait ce choix-là? Merci. Nous prenons une approche très équilibrée, très ciblée. Euh, évidemment, nous voyons seulement 250 personnes en hôpitaux avec le COVID-19. Ça veut dire que nous avons énormément de capacités supplémentaires maintenant, mais euh, nous voyons une petite augmentation dans le taux de positivité. Alors, c'est la raison pour laquelle nous euh, continuons avec notre approche euh, uh, étape par étape, très uh, uh, d'une façon très prudente, uh, avec seulement deux mesures que nous prenons aujourd'hui uh, l'ouverture de plus d'activités uh, dans le domaine des uh, de, des gymnases et de uh, des, des sports um, et pour les bibliothèques. Uh, alors, uh, c'est une, une épreuve que uh, nous pouvons uh, avancer avec le plan, mais uh, pr uh, mais d'une façon très uh, prudente. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.